Joining me right now, Jack Berkman, Republican strategist and host of Behind the Curtain with Jack Berkman. Catch him every Saturday night on the Radio America Network and Sunday afternoons at 2 p.m. on WMAL in Metropolitan D.C. Also, Mark Levine, nationally syndicated radio talk show host and the Democratic nominee for the 45th District in the Virginia House of Delegates. Welcome, gentlemen. Well, this week, a shocking announcement from House Speaker John Boehner. It's become clear to me that uh, this prolonged leadership turmoil uh, would do uh, irreparable harm to the institution. Uh, so this morning, I informed my colleagues that uh, I would resign from the speakership and resign from Congress at the end of October. Now, as you've often uh, heard me say, uh, this isn't about me. It's about the people. It's about the institution. Uh, just yesterday, we witnessed uh, the awesome sight of uh, Pope Francis addressing uh, the greatest legislative body in the world. And I hope that uh, we will all uh, heed his call to live by the golden rule. Uh, but last night, last night, I started to think about this. And uh, this morning, I woke up and I said my prayers, as I always do. And I decided, you know, today's the day I'm going to do this. As simple as that. Those close to Boehner knew that he had considered resigning last year, but after his top deputy, Majority Leader Eric Cantor, lost his seat during the midterms, he decided to stay on. Here's how Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell reacted to the news. Grace under pressure, country and institution before self. These are the things that come to mind when I think of John Boehner. He's an ally. He's a friend. And he took over as Republican leader at a very difficult time for his party. It is no secret that those to the far right felt very differently about Boehner. Jack, even you voiced your displeasure about him. What does his resignation mean for the future of the party? And will this mean a bigger shift to the far right? Uh, I don't think it means very much. It looks like at this hour here, it looks like uh, consol everything is consolidating around Kevin McCarthy. Uh, Boehner has already endorsed him uh, just an hour or so ago. So I don't think there will be big change big change. I think you're going to have a situation where McCarthy really won't be speaker, but will be prime minister, functioning, uh, uh, presiding above what, what could be a coalition government with different factions of Republicans. Boehner could have survived. In one sense, I admire him greatly. He could have survived because conservatives could never have coalesced, or coalesced around one person. So I admire him for stepping down, even though he could have surely stayed on. I'm disappointed, though. I wanted him to fight the fight over Planned Parenthood. He didn't have the stuff make you just didn't want to do it and I'm sorry about that. House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi had something quite different to say about Boehner's resignation. Uh, our speaker announcing his resignation. Uh, that resignation of the speaker is a stark indication uh, of the disarray of the House Republicans. A d demonstration of their obsession with shutting down government at the expense of women's health um, and a sign of the failure of the House Republicans to be willing to engage in dialogue for the good of the American people. Mark, let's talk about timing here. In less than a week, Congress is going to have to come to some sort of an agreement to pass a continuing resolution to fund the government. Is Boehner's resignation a sign that things on Capitol Hill could get worse? No, I think it's a sign that everything will happen exactly the way it would be if he were still there. Uh, it would be that the Democrats will join with the establishment Republicans, will vote over the Tea Party, Planned Parenthood will get funded, and Republicans on the Tea Party branch will not be able to shut down the government for the third time. Uh, John Boehner was seen singing as he was going to give his press conference. He's clearly a very happy man not to have to deal with the right wing of his party anymore. Let's talk about the Pope. On Thursday, Pope Francis addressed Congress in an historic speech, moving Boehner, a devout Catholic, to tears. When the speaker announced his retirement, he recited the prayer of St. Francis, which speaks to acceptance and keeping the bigger picture in mind. Jack, Boehner is known for wearing his emotions on his sleeve. How about your perspective? What do you think? How much did the Pope's visit weigh into his decision to actually resign? Oh, I think, I think Boehner's a, a genuinely religious man. I'm sure the Pope's uh, visit had nothing to do with this. And I don't think Boehner made this decision this morning. I think this has been something underway for a long time. I, I, I really think that, um, I, I really think what I, what I just said, Kelly Lynn, and that is that Boehner just didn't want to 
exist for the purpose of survival anymore. He really wanted to do something. His own ideology was so out of step with what was becoming a majority in the caucus. Uh, he just didn't feel that somebody who had essentially become a moderate in an extremely conservative caucus that was growing more conservative by the year uh, could do it. And I think that's why he stepped aside. I think he was out of step because he wanted to work with Democrats to pass legislation. And the right wing of the Republican Party does not want the government to function. They want the government to shut down. They want conflict. And Boehner and the established Republicans don't well, Mark, want don't that. You they think, want though, to let work me ask you this. Don't you think, done. all right, after we saw these kind of uh, Hitler esque videos from Planned Parenthood, oh, don't, on, don't Jack, you think, please. but you mean to tell me you still support funding for Planned Parenthood? Of course I do. Absolutely oh, I do. Uh, and remember, Planned Parenthood, I mean, those videos were doctored and they didn't do all the things they were accused of. Uh, at the essence, I do believe, though, that... They did they, some of them, not all of them, well, but no, no, some no, of them, you say, right? Let's be very clear. If, if, if a child is dying, I would rather use fetal tissue to save that child's but that's life a crime to than do flush that. it down the it's toilet. I know to your that. party wants to flush it down the toilet but it's a rather crime, than save lives. It's a crime. No, it's not a crime to use fetal tissue to save lives. All Listen. right, gentlemen, we're going to get back to the Pope. The address that he made to Congress touched a whole lot of people, but Pope Francis did not shy away from the tough political topics. Immigration, the death penalty, also climate change. It's not often that such popular religious figures get this political. So, Mark, what did you make of his speech? I, I loved his speech. I have to tell you everything about it, about looking out for ordinary people, looking out for the poor, about climate change, about immigration. He talked about the fact that we all share one continent. We Americans, we think of that as the United States, but it's North America and South America, and the vitality of immigrants coming to this country. I thought it was a beautiful, moving speech. I, I'm a big fan of this pope. But the Pope's address didn't fall in line with many of the GOP's principles, especially the presidential candidates. Only New Jersey Governor Chris Christie said that the Pope was wrong. Jack, is it a misstep to criticize such a well-known and highly regarded religious figure, or was Christie correct? Oh, I'd stay away from that. The last thing you want to do is have some kind of Catholic reawakening against you. If I was a candidate, I would duck that completely and say nothing about the Pope. Uh, yeah, the Pope is out of step with conservatives. He clearly has a left-of-center view. Uh, there's a lot of mixed emotions. Rubio this week trying to capitalize. He's trying to capitalize on both uh, Boehner's resignation and the Pope's visit. We'll see if he moves up in the polls. We'll see if there's any kind of a Pope bounce uh, for Rubio. I, I really don't think the Pope's visit has much to do with the 2016 election either way. Religion, however, has taken center stage this week in the 2016 race for the White House. Republican candidate Dr. Ben Carson igniting a firestorm for his comments about Muslims in the White House. I would not advocate that we put a Muslim in charge of this nation. I absolutely would not agree with that. Since then, Carson says that the money has been rolling in from people who align themselves with his message. Jack, Republicans often pride themselves on their evangelical beliefs and how they would bring those beliefs into the White House. So is it hypocritical for Carson to say that others shouldn't do the same? Well, a couple things. He said the wrong thing. I certainly don't agree with that. I mean, on its face, it's a kind of silly comment. Now, I do think it's helping him politically, and I do think money's pouring in, and it could be the beginning of something he doesn't has, have now, which is a genuine political organization throughout the South and throughout those states of the early primaries. I want to give Ben Carson the benefit of the doubt. I know him. I think he's a very good man and a smart man. I think this is what he meant to say, giving him the benefit of the doubt. Muslims, both in the United States and around the world, are increasingly radical and radicalized, and this is cause for concern. I think that's a very legitimate way of expressing his feelings. I just think it's one of those cases where it came out the wrong way. And the Constitution says there should be no religious test for anyone to run for office. I think it's extremely offensive what he had to say, and really it was an attack on the great diversity of religions that has always been in America. Let's switch gears to presidential candidate Scott Walker. Now, earlier this week, the Republican governor decided to suspend his campaign, and he called on others lower in the polls to do the same, saying that it will cause voters to focus on the issues. Jack, is this a good decision? Should others drop out? It's good for the party, and I admire Walker for doing it. If I were Walker, I would stay in. I mean, even if there's no money at this point, function as a pundit, for God's sakes. Just survive off earned media. Uh, if nothing else, hang around till Iowa. He's still strong in Iowa. I would never have uh, dropped out. 
people get frustrated. They just get frustrated. I think last week during the debate, you could see a lot of frustration with Walker. I think um, you know he comes from he comes from a state where people built him up as some kind of a god. He expected that this would translate uh, onto the national stage. It didn't, and I just think he succumbed to the frustration. Yeah, you know, last week on this very channel, I said that uh, Scott Walker had the worst of all the candidates in the debate, uh, and so I guess my prediction came true. He had to drop out. Before we go, let's discuss the latest Trump trouble. On Wednesday, the Donald tweeted that he would no longer make any appearances on Fox News because of unfair treatment. <laughs> now, the network responded to this, calling his boycott a distraction from the real campaign issues. All of this comes a week after a less than stellar performance at the second Republican debate and a dip in poll numbers. Mark Jack, is Trump a distraction? Is he creating media buzz to make up for his fall in the polls? As a Democrat, I'm a big fan of Donald Trump. I hope he wins the Republican nomination. I can't think of anyone easier for Hillary Clinton <laughs> to beat in uh, at least 40 states. Uh, I think he's very amusing. I love watching him. I can't wait to see his appearance on Saturday Night Live. I have, as you might but guess. But Jeb Bush, as I long predicted here, will be the Republican. Nominee. As you might guess, I have the opposite view. Surprise, surprise. I think Trump is the only, I'm not endorsing him, but I'm not endorsing anyone until the convention, but I think Trump is the only Republican who might even have a chance of getting to 270. The map is skewed against us. Problem, Kelly Lynn, is he doesn't know how to be a candidate. There's all kinds of events and things he's do, he should be doing, but he's stumbling. Uh, he's missing his mark. I hope he can get back on track. Jack Berkman, Republican strategist, Mark Levine, Democratic strategist, the best political panel on television. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Kelly.